the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, In those days, after the suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It's like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. <clears throat> Oh, it is Advent, yes. Yeah. Who's got a watch on this morning? Hmm, yeah. Okay, Mickey Mouse says 10 o'clock as well. Okay, thanks, buddy. Oh, now he won't be quiet. Stop. Okay. Yeah, time. Time, right? What are some sayings that we know about time? See if you can finish these. Time flies when you're having... Ooh, very good. Time changes. Time is of the all in good. Time will stand the test of, yeah, 100%. Way to go. We are consumed by time as people. We know what time it is, right? Over the millennia, we have created amazing and wonderful ways of tracking time. From the giant boulders or rocks of Stonehenge, has anybody ever been there and seen them? You have? Amazing, right? I would love to go there sometime. But they put these boulders in exactly the right place and exactly the right time, and the time is tracked through them. There's uh, something else called Greenwich Mean, Time, which is taken care of by the Royal Observatory in London. We want to know what time it is, and we want to know how much time we have left, right? Anyone counting down the days to Christmas? Maybe with an advent calendar and chocolate. Is it dark chocolate or milk chocolate? It's just chocolate. All right. We don't like it when time is messed with. Anybody else enjoy falling back in November? Hmm. It's funny that we universally agree that we should do away with that, but we can't pass the legislation to do it. Right? It is time to throw out those leftovers from Thanksgiving if they're in the back corner of your refrigerator and if they or in the freezer, you're okay. Martin Marty, who wrote a number of the hymns, um, bless you, in the uh, hymnal that we use, and is one of the people who wrote Hold an Evening Prayer that we'll use on Wednesday nights during Advent, said this in an Advent devotional, 
there is always lots of movement, a lot of hustle and bustle, with people traveling to see loved ones, shoppers going out to the stores, revelers heading for the latest holiday party, concert, or event. All of this moving takes time. It is time to catch our breath as we enter into one of the busiest months of the year. And now it's time for a new church year. At times, I'm going to say that word a lot, if you've been counting along, there's a prize at the end. At times, this month can be overwhelming for us, and we can feel time closing in on us. I'm a big science fiction fan. One of the common storylines for science fiction is time travel. If you watched any sci-fi movies or shows, you know. And it almost never ends well. Something gets messed up in the timeline. There's even a show called DC's Legends of Tomorrow. The whole show's premise is a group of people going through time and trying to fix the mistakes that other people made that broke time. Anybody a fan of Harry Potter books or movies? It's okay to confess that you are. In one of them, Hermione finds a way to be where? Two places at once, because she didn't think she had enough time to take all the classes she wanted to take. We may wish that we could bend time toward our needs or our desires, but of course we know that we can't. Today is the first Sunday in Advent, a time for thinking about our relationship with God and what it means that we will celebrate the coming of this Christ child of Christmas one more time. But Advent itself is also about time. It is about the present time, this moment, this space in the fabric of time. And it is about the moments in time that will follow. It's about our awareness of time and God's presence breaking into and throughout time. This isn't something that happens just one day a year at Christmas. God's presence is constantly breaking into our world's time and space. Albert Einstein said, by the way, always quote somebody really smart when you give a talk or a sermon because it's a nice thing to do. Albert Einstein, super smart. He said, time is an illusion. Time is an illusion. Here's my amateurish interpretation of that quote. It's simply that if we think that we can control time or understand time or all that exists outside of our understanding of what we think of as time, we are wrong. So what can we understand about time, about God's presence in and through our time? What does it look like for us to keep awake in this time, as Jesus asks Anne was a member of a congregation that I previously served. There's no reason you should know who Anne is, but I sure wish you all could have met her. I accompanied her for a few years as she went toward her 100th birthday. I moved away right before she had her 100th birthday, but I was always amazed by Anne. I wish I could have been there for her funeral. She certainly stood the test of time. What was so special about Anne? Well, I think for me, she understood something about keeping awake, about her place in time, about God's love for her and the many blessings of her lifetime. She loved to tell me about her family and about the wonderful life that she had had. But more than anything, she loved to tell me, Pastor, I'm praying for you, and I'm praying for our church.
She loved the Lord and she loved her church. Maybe that's what made visiting with Anne such a memorable experience for me. What if keeping awake, being aware of the time in which we are blessed to exist, is the thing? What will we do when we begin to realize fully that the worship of God should be that which gives meaning to our time here and now? How might it change the way that we live our lives, the choices that we make about how we spend our time during a season like Advent? How we respond to what God has done, is doing, and will do in our time. I don't think... What God is asking us is to not enjoy this time. To not embrace the fun that comes with this leading up to Christmas. But I think what we're asked is to balance things, to be aware of our perspective. I can still fill my DVR with every Christmas movie and every Christmas special and I probably have. But I can be selective about whose advice I take when it comes to finding meaning and purpose for this time, right? A writer whose blog I follow shared something recently that struck a chord with me. She wrote, of course, there's all kinds of advice for how to observe adequately the reason for the season. But such sagisms miss the point entirely. Advent asks us not to treat this time differently, but to live in time differently altogether. I think that's the thing for us to hold on to this week as we begin moving toward the manger of Christmas. Living in time differently altogether is a new way to think about our lives together and about being persons of faith for the world around us. Instead of marking the days until Christmas, although, hey, Advent calendars are awesome with chocolate, what if we marked each day by naming the ways that we see God at work around us? What if instead of making sure we make it to all the parties and activities on our calendars, We ask God to help us see the places in the world that need to be loved. What if keeping awake means not missing what God is already doing in this time? Throughout the coming weeks of Advent, to be sure, what if we named and claimed God alive and present in even the most mundane of things? What if we interpret all that fills our time by thinking about what it means that God is with us. We already make this claim about worship. What if we pay attention? What if we ask, what is God up to as we spend our time, as busy as we choose to be? How might that change our understanding of this season? I believe that God is with us loves us, is working through us and around us, in time, on time, about time, asking us to embrace a time, to keep awake, to be prepared for all that is to come. I pray that we pay attention, that we keep awake, and that we are aware as we move toward the manger in these coming days. May we be so blessed. Amen.